everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, well, I've been painting for a while today and I am convinced that my last canvas was cursed. Uh, I don't know if y'all have ever had a cursed canvas. It happens. There were smudges on it when I opened it and I had to clean it because I was worried there were oils on it. And um, the first painting, to call it a disaster is kind. And then I decided to paint over top of that and that just wound up being a hot mess too. So <laughs> I'm starting over. Uh, I have yet to get a red, white, and blue painting, um, well, with the exception of one, uh, where I didn't wind up with purple. And that one, I didn't put red in the poor part. It was kind of, the red was the background. The poor was white and blue. And I only did like half. It was kind of a cloud, cloud type pour. I'm still trying to get red, white, and blue and have that separation. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I can get that without getting a whole bunch of purple. I expect to get like hints of purple and I guess, you know, that would be okay, but that's not what I want. I want red with white and blue cells or silver and blue, whatever. So the colors we're working with today are Arteza Bordeaux Red. I love this red, it is beautiful. But if you accidentally get some on yourself and forget, don't be startled and, and think that you cut yourself. <laughs> That's what happened earlier. I was like, oh, what did I, oh, <laughs> it's paint. Okay, so we have Deco Art Met Metallics, um, the Americana Decor line and Soft Silver. And then the Americana Decor Metallics and Sapphire and Deep Sapphire. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That fixture, mixture is then thinned with my 90% water, 10% Floetrol concoction until you get to the right consistency, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. I don't like to go too thin when I'm using the metallics because I don't want the mica to separate from the uh, binders. So it will make a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. There, that is the particular painting. You have a box here that has a tip for that particular painting. And then there are color palettes at the bottom that are associated with that particular painting. These two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can just build off of those colors. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each color palette card has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the color palettes with the techniques. And you have many thousands of combinations, more than you could ever paint in a lifetime. And it can be used for uh, more than just fluid art. You can also use it for beadwork and crochet and someone used to decorate their house. So there you have it. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also now available at amazon.com. I've officially run out of my black gloves and we have so many of the blue gloves <laughs> because of COVID and uh, so we're gonna be seeing blue gloves for a while. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is lay down my base coat. The reason we are laying down a base coat. You want your paint to slide easily over the canvas. Your poured paint. This will help to maintain your composition It's not a guarantee that you'll maintain that composition. <laughs> the way that you tell it has a lot to do with that. 
but it is definitely helpful. So, and I cover the sides because these paints are mixed fairly thin and I wanna make sure that my sides have nice solid coverage because if they don't, if the canvas is white and showing through on the sides, it just doesn't look very good. So even if you don't get nice, beautiful lines on the side, it will at least be a color that uh, coincides with your painting. My base coat is down, and now I'm going to pop some of these bubbles in the base coat so that they don't pop up through my pour. Because they're gonna pop eventually. Better to do it now. And that is also why I use a base coat that is a color that is in my painting just in case I miss some of these bubbles and they pop up through my, my pour, at least it is a color that's in my painting. If I were to have, you know, a white base coat and there's no white in my pour, it'd be kind of odd to have these white dots popping up and then I would have to go back in later and paint them to make them blend in. I don't want to do that anymore, so I just do it this way. <laughs> Gonna put some paint in a cup. I'm try really hard not to touch that other canvas that's behind it. Okay. I have saved some of my red paint that I will put in a puddle in the center. I'm gonna start with my red. This is just the same red, I just put it in a, in a separate cup because I ran out of room in this one. Okay, and now for the deep sapphire, let me just double check my consistency, make sure it hasn't thickened up on me. And I pour it from up high to make it sink. And then I will do this lighter blue, which is just the regular sapphire. I'm hoping for some nice 3D boulder cells. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, so I pour up from, from up high to make this color sink. It's a cell maker. It wants to pop up to the top because it's a matte paint and when you add a glossier paint with a matte paint, the matte paints are going to want to separate from the gloss and so why you wind up with cells. And I just like to make sure that I have as much of my cell maker paints like under the what I call the background paint which is the paint that falls to the background as the cells pop up okay so I reserved some paint to be able to do this just going to come over top just to really give that some nice coverage you see they're still trying to pop up through that Perhaps you can't from that angle, but the cells are trying to pop up. And then I'm just going to put this puddle here 
this um, this cup is a bit too small for this canvas. I would actually need a couple more ounces to get the proper coverage. So that's why I'm doing this. This gives me, a, if you just imagine that there's like two more ounces <laughs> in this cup, same principle. And it will sink into that puddle I'm just doing like a very, very slow ring here. And I don't think I'm going to Fibonacci. All right, I think that was a 10 on the dismount. Okay, well, so far so good. It's a lot of paint. There might've been more than two ounces left in that cup. Better too much than not enough, which was the issue I had on the first painting I did today. I was going for an open cup. It was, it was no, no good, no good. Okay, I'm going to pop some of these bubbles and that will help some cells to come up. And if I pop them now and let them sit, they'll get bigger. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Well, I'm not seeing a uh, purple, so that's good. I think I'm going to uh, let this sit for a minute. And I'm going to let some of these cells pop up. While we're waiting for cells to pop up, I don't know if y'all have heard the, the new Silk Sonic album. If you're into that kind of stuff. I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm back in my childhood at Skateland. It's so good. It is such a good album. It is probably one of the best albums that's come out in at least a decade. I was, I was genuinely excited the first time I listened to it. And uh, really just such great musicianship on, on there. And it's got Bootsy Collins on it. So if you like, you know, funk, when they get funky, it is super funky. And I bring it up because I have one of their songs stuck in my head. I was listening to that as I was mixing these paints. And now it won't go away. Okay, well, I don't know that I'm going to be seeing the great big boulders. Because normally... 
they would be showing up by now. If I get any, it'll probably be in these areas. But we're going to see what happens. This is a lot of paint. I'm definitely going to have to dump some of this off and do some serious stretching. So I think I'm going to start here first. I know I usually do. <laughs> but I'm going to start there and then I guess try to stretch these lighter bands out. And then I should probably just get like a bunch of pop-up cells down here, it looks like. I'm going to tilt very slowly. I don't want these lines to go over top of each other. Don't want the paint to roll over on itself. Yeah, back to Silk Sonic <laughs> because it's going through my head right now and if I talk maybe it'll stop I I get cursed with uh, earworms but yeah there's some really cool songs on there and there's like f some flavors of James Brown and Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder And it's like over in a flash. It's so good. You just want more. I'm not going to completely cover that corner. I just want to catch this. I don't mind having a decent amount of negative space here. And I don't want to lose any of those lines. Hmm. I think this side is setting up. Better. So you bring the weight of the paint to the center of your canvas before you change directions. This will help to maintain your composition. This is so slow. It's such a slow process, but this is how I get the best results. And my upper body workout. This is why I don't use those deep edge canvases that often. <laughs> That's too much work. It's too heavy. Oh, I want to catch that. I want to definitely catch that little edge there. Get over there. Okay. And now I'm going to bring it back to the center. Have a break for a second. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I'm 
All right, so I think I'm going to do this corner next. This is coming out much better than the last one did, or the last two. I don't know if those will ever get shown. I don't know if I wanna put you guys through that. It was torture for me. I'm starting to get some boulder cells in there. Okay, and then to get that last corner. Bringing the paint back to center before changing directions. I'm really glad I decided to do this, to do another painting on a fresh canvas. I'm much happier with what's happening here. Coming back to center. I do want to just get a little bit of that straightened out if I can. Just a hair. Come on, just a little bit. Well, see you, Levy. Okay, so now I'm just bringing the weight of the paint back to center and I'm going to tighten up my composition a little bit. After I take a moment. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit and see what it does. But um, I think it's a winner. I think I, I think I, I got it. Finally, there's no purple. Hallelujah! All right, I'm gonna clean up and I'll bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. Red, white, and blue, and no purple. Well, it's actually silver, but from a distance, it looks white. Got some nice boulder cells.
some cool 3D action going on. That looks very 3D. Very cool. This was this was one of my bucket list paintings <laughs> to get a red, white, and blue painting with no purple. Now I know what colors to use to make that happen. But there it is. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, please click that like button and the subscribe button if you have not already. Help a sister stay afloat in the evil algorithms. Evil. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined and my affiliate links the uh, Blick Art affiliate link and Amazon and Arteza. Anything that you purchase off of those websites by clicking those links, I will receive a small commission of it, no additional cost to you. And you can find the link to my website, dinadeluca.net, where you can find my art and music and the fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And the cards are also available at Amazon, of course. And last but certainly not least, join our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration, inspiration. And that is gonna be it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.